is Anna from PNW Blanks and Sublimation, and today we're going to sublimate a 15 ounce tumbler start to finish. So the first thing we're going to do is measure our tumbler with a fabric measuring tape. Wrap it around to get the width of your rectangle. We're going to call that 9.25 inches, so we have a slight overlap at the seam. And for the height, we are going to do about 6.5 inches. I'm using Affinity Designer today. It is a one-time fee and it's actually pretty affordable and works really well for creating your sublimation designs and printing them. So I'm going to set up my paper size to 13 by 19 because that's the size of my paper and we're going to go ahead and get started. So we want to draw a rectangle and we're going to enter those measurements over here from what we measured from the tumbler. So 9.25 inches wide, 6.5 inches high. And then I just center it in the middle of my page. That way everything is just all uh, organized. That's my OCD kicking in. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and get a design. So I'm gonna head over to emmyprintco.com. She is one of PNW's featured designers and she has this new membership program, which is basically all access to everything on her website. She has two ways that you can pay. You could do a $35 a month, or you could do $350 a year, which essentially gives you two months for free. And what's really amazing about this is once you're a member like I am, then you can type in any design here in the search bar. So my customer said she wanted something that's Halloween or skulls or something like that. And so we're just going to kind of scroll down till we see something that we like. And we're going to go to this next page here. And I actually really like this design. This is super cute and actually works all year round, not just for Halloween. So all I have to do is click this download button and then you can see that it's just downloading straight to my computer and then I have the design. No need to check out or uh, pay a thing because I'm already a member. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and enter our design in there. You can also see that all of her designs include mock-ups. So even if you haven't sold a Tumblr with this design, then you can post the mock-up to gain interest. Now we're gonna go ahead and basically we're going to size that. It's a, meant for a 20 ounce, and so we're gonna size it down for a 15 ounce. So if I click and drag the pattern down into my rectangle, you can see how it the, it's basically confined to the constraints of my rectangle now. So we can either size it down like this, or if it was something that, you know, was proportional and needed to be sized a little bit differently, then we can just move that rectangle, that pattern around. But I don't think it looks too bad, a little bit scrunched up. So we're going to go ahead and stick with that. Now you could go ahead and just print and be done. But we're going to add a name because that's what my customer wanted. So she is, she wants this for her daughter, a bunch of different tumblers for school starting. So we are doing the 15 ounce edgy tumblers with the sports lids, which make great kids cups. So we're going to go ahead and enter the name. And if you wanted to change the font, then you can do so right here. And you can kind of, it gives you a preview of what it would look like, which I think is really awesome because then you can just kind of scroll through. And if you have a thousand fonts like me, then you can see which one you like best. And I actually like my names going from uh, bottom to top, not top to bottom. So I'm going to flip that around and get it placed in the center of my rectangle and where I like it. And then you can see with this black color, I mean, we could make it a white so it pops out a little bit more, but instead we're gonna go ahead and add this outline. And I'm gonna add a white outline to it and just to give it, let that name pop out from the design a little bit more. So as you increase the radius, then it gets bigger. And we're actually gonna get zoom in here so we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. <laughs> so we're going to increase the radius so that outline gets larger and I just want it, I want it to be kind of just a white, I don't want it to just be like a stroke of around the name, I want it to actually 
be kind of a white background almost for the name to pop out a little bit but I don't want it to be bright white so I'm gonna mess with the opacity as well and that way you know we can kind of see start to see the design come through the background a little bit so it's not just stark white and once we get it to where we like it then we're gonna go ahead and close out of there and take a look at our design and I think that looks pretty good it's a little big for a name so I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit I usually like the height of my name to be around an inch to an inch and a half I don't like it to be uh, huge and I don't want it to cover the design too much so now we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this rectangle and then we're going to delete the other delete the design we've already have so underneath the rectangle if you just go ahead and delete then we still have our rectangle to add another design head back over to Emmy print and let's try these ones where you can add your own text and see if there's something in here that kind of meets the description of what my coworker said she wanted. She did say bright and colorful. I think this one definitely fits the bill. So we're gonna go ahead and download this guy. And once again, we're gonna do the exact same thing as before. Go back to our downloads folder, find the d design we just downloaded. Once again, you can see that those mock-ups are there for you to be able to use to sell the designs uh, before making, without having to make every single tumbler that you have a design for. And then we're going to go ahead and put it into that rectangle so it restrains the size. So you can see, like, as I get it, make it larger, the design starts to disappear. And so then you know exactly where your rectangle ends are at. And this is one that also doesn't really need to be proportional. We could have a little bit of smaller pebbles or giraffe print, or I'm not really sure what, what this is exactly, but we can have a little bit smaller of that. And so we'll just shrink it down. I'm going to go ahead and copy that name because it's already sized and everything. So we'll just copy it, but we don't want that white outline. And we're going to do something a little bit different. I want the name to match this really fun, colorful pattern here. So what we're going to do is duplicate that rectangle and then basically uh, click and drag it underneath the name so it becomes attached to the name. And then you can see as I move that rectangle over, move the design over, see how it's filling the name with the design itself. So then you just kind of play around with it, see where you want it and where it looks good to you. I think right there looks good, but I do want it to pop just a hair. So I'm going to go ahead and add a back, a black stroke to it. And then once again, you just play around until you figure out where you want it. It's not an exact science or anything. It's just kind of how you like it or how your customer likes it. I think that looks good. And so we're gonna go ahead and keep it like that. Um, but we're actually gonna make the name just a little bit bigger on this one to fill in that white space a little bit more. And then I want it to be a different font just because we don't want, we want a little bit different look. So we'll go ahead and Kind of scroll down like i said i have thousands of fonts hundreds hundreds of thousands i don't know how many fonts i have way too many that's for sure so we're just going to kind of scroll until we find something that we like and like i said i love how affinity gives you like a preview of what your font will look like uh, and it keeps the, that background design as well because we had already set that up in the beginning so you can see exactly how it's going to look in the end. I'm also one of those really indecisive people where I kind of have to see like all, not all the fonts, but tons of fonts before I can actually make a decision. But I like this one. This one looks cute with the design and the colors. 
I think it works well. For my kids cups, I also stay away from cursive fonts because they're kids and they probably don't know cursive yet. And I wanna share one more tip with you. So if I move this rectangle around, you can see how it's moving everything with the name and the design. And that's because it's grouped underneath this rectangle as opposed to the top one where see the name is separate from the rectangle and then if I move the rectangle it's actually going to that name is going to stay put because it's not part of it. So that's just something to keep in mind when designing and how you want to group things. Sometimes you want it to be separate but sometimes you do want it grouped together. So now we're going to go ahead and print. My printer's already set up. I just have to use one of my preset settings. This is the one that I use for all of my tumblers. And then for the fit type, I do fit to printable. And you could see that red highlighted actually moved down because it is going to fit the printer. Once our designs are printed and cut, it's time to wrap our tumblers up. I use the roly poly tool and only three pieces of tape for my 15 ounce tumblers. Well, for all my tumblers actually and it makes it really easy to just roll the transfer on. My press is set to 358 degrees resting, 360 printing with a time of 40 seconds, and you don't need heavy pressure at all. You should be able to close your press with only two fingers. It's way more efficient to batch my tumblers, so I like to prep everything while one is cooking and then the next one is ready to go when that first one finishes. So there is that first one and we're going to finish it off with the teal sports lid just to match that design and it looks so cute with that Stella name matching the design. The tumblers only need to be pressed twice with one rotation of 180 degrees in the middle. So once this tumbler is done we will finish it off with the pink sports lid. And there's just something so satisfying about unwrapping a tumbler and it just looking absolutely perfect. And there are our two finished tumblers. I just have to brag real quick about that seam right there. I mean, it blends perfectly. I love seamless designs. Like, share, subscribe, and join our Facebook group. Happy pressing!